Hello, everybody. Had a little bit of a change uh, to the introduction and uh, didn't work exactly the way I wanted it to. Uh, when I tried to do both, it uh, basically stops doing the PowerPoint slide. So anyway, for those of you who signed on early, hopefully you got to see a little bit uh, snapshot of the calendar that I have uh, created for some of the things that are going on this month. I am quickly approaching my one year anniversary of being in business with Vintage Resale. I did my first YouTube video actually didn't happen until Thanksgiving. So I've got a little bit longer till I hit my one year mark for that. But I figure I'm going to try and do some fun things when I get to uh, October, which is my anniversary month. And uh, so I'm trying to get some things organized. And one of the items that I wanted to do is a little bit of uh, an advanced peek at what I'm doing throughout the month. And that little calendar was a way to do that. So if I can figure out a way to uh, keep that going in the future, I will do that. But for now, it is the top of the hour. So we are at the point of starting the sale. So I appreciate everyone who uh, did sign on a little bit early and appreciate those of you who are here. Little Mint, Little Vintage Me 64, thank you so much for joining. I do appear to be having a slight problem with my comment stream again. I had this problem last week as well, that the stream does not seem to be filling in with the same comments that I can see on my uh, phone. So I may be doing a lot of looking down as I try and see both my phone and the, uh, and this, and the screen. Uh, so Stan Runyon, welcome back. Margaret Johnson. Hello, Lester Fitzpatrick. Thanks for uh, joining us again. Suzanne McLean. Thank you so much for uh, squeezing us in. I know you've got a uh, baseball game tonight, uh, that I think you said you're a manager of that. So I appreciate you uh, squeezing us into the, um, into your schedule. Uh, Judy Scallett, uh, if I hopefully I pronounced your name right, but hello, Judy. Uh, Mama J, welcome. I think I saw you in um, Michelle's sale earlier tonight, so uh, thanks. Uh, Carrie uh, from Austin, thanks for joining us. Uh, Helen Casey, hello. Hemlock lady, hey, Hemlock. Uh, Carolyn Whitney, excellent. Uh, Larry LeWayne, haven't seen you in a while. Thanks for coming back to uh, joining the show. And Lynn Hampton, again, welcome back to you. Um, I always want to try and catch as many people as I can because those of you who've seen the show or seen the, the sales before, once I get started selling, I have a hard time following the chat anyway. So the fact that I still don't appear to have anything in my chat isn't the end of the world. Uh, Proxter Helper usually tries to poke me if people have questions or if there's something that I need to know. Uh, but uh, regardless, funky, no wait, vintage funky junk. I think that's a new one for me. So welcome. Michelle, Comfy Cozy Living. So glad that Michelle is here tonight. If you signed on early enough and saw the little calendar that was scrolling across the screen, you know that uh, Michelle and I, tonight is the first night we were announcing it. Michelle and I are going to be co-hosting a meetup. And so that was going to be taking place on Saturday, August 29th. It will take place in the Western suburbs of Chicago. It'll be primarily based around the town of Aurora. Uh, if for people that are relatively know this, know, uh, that know the city well enough. So we're about a 35 miles due west of Chicago. For anyone who is in the area or can drive to the area, all we're gonna really do is organize probably a four stop shop hop, maybe five if we can squeeze them in, kind of depends which ones we pick and how close together they are, but they'll all be anchored around Aurora. Uh, we will probably spend at least an hour, if not an hour and a half at each one. And all I'm gonna, all we're gonna do is we will post a schedule saying these are the places we're going, these are the times that we're going to be there, and you can come and go as you please. If you're not a morning person, you can skip the one we do at 9 a.m. If you want to do something later in the day, you can just come to the ones in the afternoon. If you want to have plans, if you've got a baseball game in the afternoon, you can leave after after the second or third stop. Whatever you want to do, there are no invitations. I cannot under, underscore that enough. This is an invitationless event. If people want to participate, if you hear about it, you can come. If you don't hear about it, well, you won't know to come. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is not, no one is being invited. This is literally an event that I did invite Michelle to co-host with me because she's one of the uh, resellers on the live sales that is the closest geographically to me. And luckily our schedules aligned on August 29th because August 29th is actually the grand opening of the vintage mall that I moved into. So there will be definitely one stop at that vintage mall, but this is not all about me. 
So I will basically pick, like I said, it kind of depends on the on the, the math. I think I'm looking probably at four, maybe five. I have something in the evening that I need to make sure that I'm back for. Uh, but regardless, we will try and get uh, details out as we go. So watch Michelle's channel, watch my channel, watch our Instagram, whatever the case may be. That will be Saturday, August 29th, will be a Chicagoland area meetup. So anyone who is in the Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana area, you are welcome to make the drive. You know, even uh, Thrift U wants to, uh, if Thrift U wants to uh, be true to her promise to come stay at my house, well, she can come from Iowa and that'd be the weekend to do it. May not let you in the house, but you can, you can, you can sleep on my doorstep. Uh, but regardless, August 29th, it's the last Saturday of August. And uh, hopefully, you know, we'll have some people turn out. And if not, Michelle and I will just have a blast because we'll be shopping together. And basically what I'll be doing is I'll, I'll be taking it all my favorite places. The places I've talked about here on the show, you'll be able to go to yourself. And if I, we get a couple of YouTubers like Michelle uh, and, and myself, we might actually try and videotape some things and maybe, you know, get some videos out on our YouTube channels for you. But, you know, that's still weeks away. We'll see if anyone else, uh, any other YouTubers want to join us. And if it's Everyone just wants to have some fun. That is what we are about. Uh, so welcome, uh, Greg from uh, Blue Feather Mercantile, Mercantiles Unite. So uh, thanks, Greg, for coming back and uh, joining the show. Uh, again, I've only got like partial feeds. So some of you seem to be, usually like win a prize because literally my feed consists of five people. Little Brit Vintage Me, Sandra Runyon, Margaret Johnson, Carolyn Whitney. Oh, I got a sixth one. Larry Lewayne and Blue Ve Feather Mercantile. That's it. That's all I can see. So I kind of have to look down at my phone and see the rest of it. Uh, so Ferns Fines, thank you for joining us. I think I recognize your name. I don't know if, uh, maybe from another chat. I think I recognize that. Some of you get really unique in your name. So sometimes I can remember them because of that and sometimes I can't. Uh, Nurse Flipper, thank you so much for joining. Lisa Carl, thank you for joining again. I got your shipment out the other day, so I hope you'll you'll get that soon. Jackie, thanks for coming back. I'm not gonna try your last name because I think I screwed it up the last time. Um, uh, Debbie from Chicago, welcome back. I was beginning to think you didn't like me because you bought from one of my first sales and then I never saw you again. And I could drive to your house to drop these things off. So welcome, so glad that you've come back and uh, put your trust in trusty huckster. Uh, all right, so I probably missed some people. Oh, Monica Delgado's here, congratulations. Welcome back, Monica, glad to see you again. Um, Teofane, excellent, thank you for joining. Auntie Christie, that's a new name. I don't recognize that one. Melody's back, uh, fantastic. Um, Cindy, Cindy Lou's who, C nah. Cindy Lou, who's Thrifted Treasures. Yay, I, I actually kind of eventually got it out. Tammy Mitchell, fantastic. Um, Vintage Collectibles, hello, Jeannie. I uh, hope your sales are, are, I know you did one live sale, I think last week. Hopefully you've got some more scheduled uh, coming up. I saw you were testing the StreamYard app. So hopefully that is uh, working out. Wait, did I just see Winking Isle? Oh, yep, Barb is here from uh, Winking Isle Antiques. Uh, Laura Bemos has popped in. Laura Bemos is actually you know, honoring with uh, us with her presence because she should be playing pool. Uh, if you did not catch my last deep dive, uh, Laura Bemos did a deep dive on dominoes. So that is in my uh, playlist right now. And then if you, again, if you watch the calendar that scrolled across at the beginning, my next deep dive is actually coming up this Sunday. And that will be, and I apologize, Kelly, if you're on, I, I might have missed you. Kelly from Moss Stone Story Vintage will be doing a deep dive this Sunday at 8 p.m. on this channel on Little Golden Books. So we've got a Little Golden Books deep dive scheduled for the 9th. And then on the 23rd, I've got Rebecca from Kitchy and Bitchy who will be here for a swizzle stick deep, deep dive. So I'm really looking forward to that one. So we're gonna have some fun. And we're gonna get things started. So I had, did, if you don't follow my follow me on Instagram, I did do some preview uh, shots of what's coming up, and there were a lot of people getting excited by some of the things that I had in my Instagram um, previews. So hopefully you like what you see. This is a themed sale. I tried to be a broad enough definition of vintage kitchen to keep everyone interested because sometimes people don't like the themes or they're like, oh, I don't wanna buy that. But one of my favorite comments when I did the dog days of summer, somebody had said, oh, I watch your show, but you know, I'm not really into dog things. I didn't think I'd buy anything. I ended up buying three different things because the way I define dog gave a bunch of different items into the mix and uh, had some fun. So that's kind of what's gonna happen tonight. But the first item I'm gonna start with is probably the definition of kitchen. It is a cinnamon shaker. 
Oh, I probably should hit the rules really quick. If you haven't been here before, I'm going to show you an item. I'm going to probably give you a little story about it, tell you about it. I'm going to give you a price on it. I will then announce the number. When I announce that number, if you are interested in it, you need to type that number into the live chat. Now make sure you're in the chat, not the comments. And it is a high, it's a, in, we encourage you to do the live chat, not the top chat. You can toggle between the two. So if you're in the live chat, be the first person, I uh, put your, put the number that I announced, put that into the chat. The first person we see, and we cannot emphasize that enough. The first person that we see, the Huckster Helper is online. The first person that she sees in the chat will be the person who claims that item. Now you might see yourself as the first person in the chat, but that's because you're the fastest, clo you're the closest to your own internet. So you're gonna get a little skewed sometimes if you just pay attention to that. There's no conspiracy, there's no favoritism. It's literally who we can see first. And typically if you go back and watch the chat or watch the video and follow the chat later, you will see the same order that we did. You just won't always see it right when you're live. So just keep that in mind. So the first item is a cinnamon, uh, cinnamon shaker. This is actually one of the very first items I ever picked up. And at the time I bought it, I, I mean, I assumed it was part of a set, but I didn't realize that it's, it's actually usually part of a boxed set. So you can see it's got this little knob on the front. So what this would have done, it would have sat in like a framed wooden piece and it would have slid into a little shelf. And then that was the knob you used to pull it in and out. It wasn't that I didn't have access to that. I saw this piece all by itself. I thought the rooster was kind of cool, thought it was true definition of vintage. I just kind of had been, it had been sitting around. I never even listed it on my Etsy store. So I thought this was the perfect way to start out the sale with a vintage cinnamon shaker. So you can have a rooster in your kitchen. And if you're interested in the rooster cinnamon shaker, you can have them for four bucks. And for $4, you can claim it by giving me number 10. $4, number 10 for the rooster cinnamon shaker. All right, I have a handful of textiles in the uh, show tonight. Uh, start, well, I'll start off with one of them. Uh, this one is a kind of, I thought it was a, kind of an interesting piece because it's clearly a towel. It's a, you know, decent sized towel. It's not massive, but it's, it's a decent size, you know, dish towel. But what I really kind of liked about it and it was something that I hadn't seen before, but admittedly, I'm not huge on uh, textiles. So this might be something you guys know more about, but you can see stitched into the red banner at the bottom. It says right on there, all linen. It says on the other side, made in Ireland. Now in the middle, it says glass. Now, I don't know why it says glass because then it's been stitched above it, the word silver. So this is clearly, you know, and it's got the cutlery, it's stitched with the cutlery to form the word silver. So. I guess this would be used as a silver polisher, but I don't know if a silver polisher would always be white. I would think that you would, it would all the, the tarnish would then come off onto the towel and your towel wouldn't be white anymore. So I thought maybe it could be used to wrap your silver, but again, the size of it just makes me think it's a dish towel. So if you guys know any more about what this is, you know, specifically, I'd be interested, but it doesn't really matter because I'm selling it. Uh, and it's, you know, it's in really nice condition. There's, you know, there's a little bit of nubbiness, you know, along the edges, but it's not really frayed. It's just because this is linen, it's Irish linen. So it's just a really nice piece. I'm not a hundred percent sure on the age and on the stitching, you can kind of see the stitching. I'm my verdict, my jury is out on whether this is hand done or if this was machine done. I think it's machine done because of the uniformity of that flower but there are a couple places where they carry the stitch, which you're not supposed to do. So that might be, uh, it looks like that was hand knotted. So this might be hand stitched. So I don't know if this was sold this way or if somebody bought the Irish linen and then stitched the word silver into it. Regardless, I think it's a cool individual uh, dish towel vintage for five bucks. So $5 for the silver Irish linen towel and you can have it by giving me number 48. Number 48. $5 for the vintage linen silver towel. And uh, if you're following along in the chat, whoever claims it, uh, the, Huck the Huckster Helper will announce in the chat who is the winner, uh, who's claiming the item. I will then also try and do it verbally because sometimes the chat goes too fast and people miss it. Uh, so number 10, the uh, cinnamon shaker went to Melody Harris. So congratulations to Melody um, getting the cinnamon shaker. All right. 
Uh, the next item, I considered whether I should put it in the sale or not because it's it's perfect for Vintage Kitchen. It's a perfect item for you know selling in this event. But as I grabbed them together, I decided to make it a lot. They ended up being, they're, they're kind of heavy. So what these are, are the brown bag cookie art by Hill Design. They're like the little cookie presses and they're not all that little. I mean, this is probably, you know, four or five inches across. You've got the wreath, which is dated on the back, 1988. You've got the gingerbread house, which is dated on the back, 1989. And you've got the snowman, which is dated on the back, also 1989. So these are all from the Brown Bag Cookie Art Company. And they come with a little recipe booklet that was you know tied on to it. So like basically ideal for a gift. And there's recipes in there for gin ginger cookies, lemon cardamom cookies. Um, yeah, so we've got these, they're all dated. So you know we're basically in at least the definition, Etsy definition of uh, vintage. But when you add the three together, it's fairly heavy. So just you need to be aware of that as I do the deal with shipping, that this is going to be a couple of pounds, you know, just in all of this, um, all of this, this stoneware there. So I try to price it a little bit more attractively to overcome the fact that this is going to cost a little bit more for shipping. So all three of them, you get the set of three for eight dollars. So hopefully that's a good enough price that even if I have to ship them to Michelle at Mermaid Code in California, um, the shipping won't kill us and you still will get a pretty good deal. But if you're closer to Illinois, I ship out, I live outside Chicago. So if you're in closer to me, you'll even have a better deal. But regardless, selling the set of three for $8 by giving me number 35, $8, three cookie cutters, plus the little recipe booklet, $8 number 35. And so one of the um, comments that came in that Huckster Helper pointed, because I still can't see all the comments, is that the silver and glass is because linen is good at cleaning things without getting lint on them. So that actually does make sense. So it probably started as a glass polishing, cloth and then somebody did stitch the silver onto it because that's what threw me is why does it say both silver and glass but maybe it was marketed that way too so that's kind of cool uh so thank you judy for sharing that uh number 48 the uh, silver and uh now we now know both silver glass irish linen towel went to blue flamingo who is Lori. so congratulations Lori from blue flamingo for uh, nabbing the linen towel all right uh, next item I've got, if you follow my channel at all, you know, you end up getting a lot of pottery, porcelain, and glass. So let's throw my first, first piece of glass up for the night. So what this is, we're moving, you know, we're still in kitchen, kitchenware, but we're kind of moving into cocktailware. So this is a Bloomfield Industries. It's stamped on the bottom. It's got an impressed, uh, embossed mark there on the bottom. It is Bloomfield Industries, their Parisian um mixing glass so you can see it's got the eiffel tower on there it's got the arc de triomphe it's got the moulin rouge so it's got all the you know the uh, individual um tourist spots but then it also has and this is what i really like about these and i should have thought to grab a white piece of paper um what i really like about these is you end up having the recipes. This this style has recipes on it for making a drink. So you've got an old fashioned, you know, stir well with a cherry and an orange slice. You've got the whiskey sour, and you've got you know little the the little people, the little Parisian people wandering around, and you have multiple recipes on here. So the recipe for the martini, the Tom Collins, and what was another daiquiri. Now did a little bit of research on this. And the item itself, which would have been expected, should have a uh, mixing top. It should have one of the, the chrome uh, mixers with then has a little spout on it. So you would actually be able to shake it. There are recipes on here that do call for stirring. So you don't have to shake everything, but technically it's a not complete piece, which means technically I can't charge what everyone else is charging when it is complete. So I've tried to create an attractive price for this recognizing in some cases, I don't even know if people would use it. It's an absolutely gorgeous piece with some amazing color 
uh, decoration. One place said this was from the 70s, but some other places said it was earlier. I couldn't find any record that specifically said uh, what year it's from. Um, I would have said earlier, but regardless, it's some very cool graphics all the way around, great condition, no chips, no cracks. It's molded glass. It does have the seam. You can see it's running down the side. It's not a crack that is from being molded. Uh, and it is a mixing glass. So if you're interested in the Bloomfield uh, Industries mixing glass for $12, that is number 60. $12, number 60 for the Parisian mixing glass. All right, jump on to another set of textiles. So one of the items for people who've watched my sales in the past, uh, one of the, uh, some of the sales that, uh, sale items I've had in the past came from an estate sale that a friend of mine was doing from her mother or her parents' estate. And I helped price a bunch of things, a bunch of antiques and furniture. I was dealing with stuff I'd never even seen before. And a lot of it was stuff that we decided to do kind of a profit share on because I wasn't sure what exactly it would go for. And in the interest of time to try and close out these so she can shut down the house, I just took a bunch of things. So some of those pop up into these. So some of them have some pretty interesting stories just in the sense that I know the family where they come from. But this, this is one of three aprons that I'm going to show tonight. And this is the style of apron and I, again, this is, this is a new area for me. So this is one of those things that I, you know, I basically did this as a profit share because I wasn't necessarily sure how to handle it. This one does not have a tie around the neck. It is actually all one piece. So my big head does fit through it without a problem. Uh, so yes, I am going to wear it. I gotta make sure I don't cover my microphone again. Um, it's a lovely, lovely piece. So in my case, you can see it basically, it, it it cuts me here. I'm not sure it has the best place. And my waist is way down here. So I'm 5'10". So this is clearly designed for someone who's a little bit shorter. Um, but it's still an attractive piece. It has a embroidery down at the bottom. This is another case where I am pretty sure because of the uniformity of those stitches, I'm pretty sure this is machine made. I think this was this was done and sold. It was the design of the apron when it was sold. I don't think that was stitched on separately. I could be wrong because again, there's a couple places where the yellow uh, stitching was carried, uh, which I don't think a machine would do. But it's it's if this was hand done, this was someone who was extremely skilled. Other than the fact she carried her stitches, so this is a very pale yellow. Hopefully, that's coming across the screen. And then the floral design is, um, it's a purple, kind of a lavender purple. That's actually in my screen showing up pretty, pretty true to color with green leaves. And then that the yellow, so it's kind of a yellow on love yellow. Uh, the, the, uh, I want to say pastels, but that's not what they're called. Pistols, stamens. I don't know. I don't remember my floral terminology, but it's a cool, definitely vintage, uh, hostess apron. You, I don't think you'd be cooking in this and it is available for seven bucks. So the embroidered yellow, uh, um, hostess apron, $7 by giving me number 36, 36, $7 for the hostess apron. All right. The next item is an item that for those of you who've uh, watched a lot of the live sales and just are really into the vintage community, um, George, the antique nomad, hosted several of us for a uh, estate sale that he was organizing. We got private access to it uh, before it opened to the public. And one of the items that I had picked up from him is this toaster, which is going to blind all of us as it hits my lights. But it is a vintage toaster. It has the style, it's it's prior to the pop-up style. So it's a style where you have to open the side panel. So you're cooking one side of the bread at a time. So you put the bread in, close it up, it toasts the one side. When you open it up, you then have to flip the bread around and then toast the other side. It is double-sided, so you can do two pieces of toast at a time, but you do have to stir the toast. So you're doing the toaster, you're stirring it to the other direction. So this one is also with the cord. So this is a case where uh, this wasn't, basically that trip is what solidified the idea of doing a vintage kitchen sale. 
because George really walked me through, as did Misty from Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter, uh, Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage, as well as uh, Laura and Mary Beth from Fatbird Finds. Basically, an area of collecting and selling that I just really hadn't gotten into. Not that I didn't like it or appreciate it. I just hadn't had an opportunity to know. And so this was one of those items that with George and everyone else's tutelage, I picked it up and I'm making it available here. Uh, it is a Westinghouse um, design uh, from Mansfield, Ohio. So it is stamped on the bottom. So you've got this great vintage chrome toaster with the cord. Now I'm not gonna, I did not test it. Um, so I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily say you can or can't use it. It is the original uh, two pronged uh, plug and it does seem to be in good condition, but this is being sold as is untested. So just be aware of that. But the vintage toaster is available for $25. So $25 for the Westinghouse toaster by giving me number 59. 59, $25 for the Westinghouse toaster. All right, so a little behind the chat. Um, all right. Hold on one second. Sorry, now my internal chat is screwed up as well. So <laughs> the Oxford helper has to whisper things to me. Uh, all right, so the uh, next item is, let's go to a smaller uh, little oddball piece. This is one, I actually picked this up from that, um, the estate sale and or the woman that was helping to the estate. And this ended up being one of those cases that we could not figure out what this was. I actually did uh, post this on my Instagram page and put out the call asking if anyone could figure out what this was. It is uh, marked as Inox, I-N-O-X France. And this item, uh, Inox itself does do a lot of high-end uh, uh, cutlery and silverware. They actually tend to do a lot of shellfish items. So like they have escargot tools, they have oyster shucking knives, they have a lot of like fine dining items that are very specialized for shellfish. So there was some suggestion that maybe this is for escargot, but unlike the little prong thing that uh, Julie Roberts screwed up in Pretty Women, Pretty Woman, this does not squeeze. So it's 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 state it's it's stable. It's stand. It's stationary. So some people said that maybe it was a meat fork, so you could hold something down to carve it. That was probably the closest we got to it. I think this seems a little small to be a, a meat fork, unless it's a small, like maybe a pork loin or something that's not like a big roast. Uh, usually those big roasts have really big forks like this. They maybe have the weird prongs, but they're a lot bigger. This one is a lot smaller than somebody said that maybe this was actually for potatoes. I don't, I've never heard of having a potato carving fork um, or holder, but regardless, it is just a cool little piece. It is Inox. Um, the material of the handle, I do not know if it is Bakelite or not. So everyone claims that you should be able to, you know, rub it and smell it and have a chemical smell. I don't, but I have a chemistry degree. And so I tend to have a different sense of smell than most people. So I don't know, to me, this doesn't have a chemical smell because I know what chemicals really smell like. Uh, so this may just be plastic. And because I couldn't identify it, I really don't know the era. I mean, you can see that it was it was uh, injection molded because you can see the, the seam. So I don't think this is Bakelite. I do think this is just a traditional plastic, but I couldn't tell you. So I'm just passing this on uh, from the estate sale for what we think it, you know, I think as a fun item, we think is worth, it's worth $6. So we're selling it for six bucks and you can have it by giving me number 39, 39 for the Inox France mystery fork. All right, 39, $6. And so one of the suggestions is a pickle spear. Okay. Is that a guess or do you know that? Because I I guess a whole pickle, but if it if it's in a jar, I guess maybe if it's laying, I don't, I don't know. I, it's, it's as good a guess as any we had that it is really designed to pierce something. That was pretty that was pretty much the consensus that it was used to grab something. Um, so we are good to go. So I did uh, get an update on the um, sale, and so number thirty six the yellow sheer apron went to Jane Newhouse. So congratulations, Jane. I think you might be a new name for us. 
So if, um, unless you've changed your name, because so many people tend to do that. Uh, so regardless, anyone who does uh, claim something tonight, if we announce you as the winner or you see it in the chat, please send an email to the email address that's uh, scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Make sure you give us your shipping address um, and any and the, e the email address you want us to use to send you a PayPal invoice. So uh, I can't do anything unless you contact me first. If you bought from me before, out of courtesy, it'd be, it'd be nice if you sent me an email because it's just tidy, but Huckster Helper is great with her notes. Um, so we'll typically know who it is. Uh, but if we've, you've never bought from me before, I desperately need that email. So keep that in mind. And uh, number 39, the weird fork, uh, which is exactly how I named it on my sheet. Uh, the weird fork goes to Sandra Long. So again, another new name, I think, another new name for us. So I appreciate, um, I appreciate you purchasing and I appreciate you sending us an email at some point during the night. Um, and so Vinny's giving me some tips uh, that I can use to test Bakelite with, with 409. I've never, I've never heard of that. Uh, so I will have to keep that in mind. Won't be able to do it on this one because Sandra Long just bought it. So Sandra Long, if you want to know if it's Bakelite, get you some 409. I don't know what it's going to do. What, do you, what will it do, Vinny? Will it melt it? I don't think I'd want to do that. Um, so let us give us some update because that is something that's new to me. Uh, we're all still learning. And that's one of the things I love about the YouTube vintage community. People share that kind of information and I definitely have used it. Now I did misunderstand one. Uh, Kelly from Mossstone Story at one time suggested uh, Polydent uh, for dentures for cleaning. And I thought it was for cleaning. You know, sometimes glass gets cloudy. So I was thinking it was, it was for that. She said, no, that was actually to clean porcelain, which then after she told me that, I'm like, oh, that totally makes sense because dentures are not glass, they're porcelain. So, you know, you live and learn, but uh, we all learn from each other. So some there's some mystery about uh, cleaner of uh, 409. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research. Vinny's gonna have to give us a crash course. All right, uh, another traditional vintage kitchen item. This is something that at the time I found it, I bought it immediately because I thought it was so cool. I'd never seen one. It is a pie, pie tin, you know, pretty obvious. It's a pie tin, but it's a pie tin that has this little lever that you can spin all the way around. So you release the pie from the tin. Now, the minute I found it, I then found like three more. So yeah, I mean, maybe they're not as rare as I thought they were at the time I bought them, but I still thought this was pretty cool. So it's an OvenX brand. You can see that's embossed at the top. It has it's an eight inch size. It has, I thought, a pretty cool design. I've carried pie plates or pie tins before, but they're typically just the design of the logo of the tin or just smooth. So this kind of has this nifty little starburst pattern that goes into both sides. So it's, uh, you know, it's embossed into it from uh, recessed from the front and then raised out on the back. It's in great condition. It's got the, the rivet that holds the spinner in place is still tight. This, it is tight to be able to spin it, so it's, it's not really loose and flimsy. And it sits, it's kind of hard to show with the camera, but it does sit flat against the bottom of the pan so that as you're spinning it, it actually is going to scrape. If you wanted to use this as a legitimate pie, pie, pie tin, it would actually scrape along the bottom. You wouldn't be hacking through the pie because it's raised up. So this is the OvenX Scraper Pie Tin. It is available for $5, and you can have that by giving me number. 12. Number 12, $5 for the OvenX pie scraper. All right. If you've watched any of my uh, uh, sales in the past or some of my other videos, you know, as everyone likes to point out, I have a thing for coasters. I never knew it was a thing until everyone started, you know, mocking me for it, but I can take it because I think coasters are important to the world. I grew up with coasters. I did not grow up with a lot of important things, but coasters was just one of those things that I didn't realize I was unique in. Um, I have a ridiculous number of them in my own home. And uh, I've, so I've actually inadvertently ended up having coasters in every sale I have done. If you go back and watch any of my videos, I have any of my sale videos, I've had coasters in every live sale. So if you're gonna buy coasters from somebody, you might as well buy it from the guy who's obsessed with coasters. So in order to maintain my streak, I am bringing in another coaster. This one I thought was really kind of nice. It's stretching maybe a little bit in the, uh, is it um, kitchen, you know, because I don't know, do you actually need a coaster in the kitchen? But where this one's a little bit different is it's a wine coaster. So you've got Santa, a reindeer, and a snowman getting snookered on a wine bottle. So it says Merry Christmas right on there. 
what I really liked about this and the reason I picked this up, because obviously it's not vintage, so it's it's really not even following the merits of the sale, but it does still have the original packaging. The original packaging is in perfect condition. This has never been taken out of its packaging. It has a UPC label on it. There's no actual date on it. I mean, but obviously this is not old, you know, so it says, you know, you can it, uh, do not put in dishwasher, you know, so there's, there's obviously some things about it that it's not old. I don't think it's brand new, but regardless, it is a cool coaster. What's nice about it, you can see there at the top, it actually includes an easel. So the easel, you don't have to use it as a coaster. You could just use it in a little vignette as a little prop up for your alcoholic Santa collection. So thought this was kind of cool. Thought it was fun. Thought it was, you know, with the wine aspect, close enough to kitchen. I throw it, threw it into the sale and you can have them for five bucks and it'd be great as a secret Santa gift or, you know, just a little, little item that you, you know, if we ever do office visits again, you know, you can give to the office uh, group or whatever stocking stuffer for $5 and you can get that by giving me number 52, 52 for the Santa on the wine bottle stone coaster with easel. All right, going into more traditional vintage kitchen. Uh, this is an item that actually, again, if I start looking back, I always said that I never really did a lot in vintage kitchen, which I would say as a whole was true. But as I started pulling items that I wanted to include, I suddenly found these items that I had bought at the very beginning. So this is one of them. This is a butter pitcher. Uh, it's Napco ware. And this typically has other pieces, a larger one and a smaller one. Uh, this is the butter and it says obviously right on there, butter. I thought the graphics were cool at the time I bought it because you've got the, the waffle, you've got the pancakes, you've got toast, you've got all these things that you would put butter on, you know, in, in a raised relief all the way around. It's in absolutely perfect condition. There's no chips, there's no cracks. It's absolutely fantastic. And it is stamped at the bottom that it is Napco wear. So this was just a fun piece that as I started building my Etsy store, which is where I was selling most everything, it was one of those that it was a small enough piece that probably would be easy enough to ship, but it wasn't, it's not really worth all that much money. So I, it, it was never really enough for me to, it was never enough for me to list it. And I was always hoping I would find the other two pieces of the, of the set because then that would have made the value jump significantly, but never did thought this was a perfect uh, item for a vintage sale. And I thought it was a perfect price point for a vintage sale because it's only five bucks. So if you'd like the Napco wear uh, butter pitcher, you know, for $5 by giving me number 23, $5, number 23 for the Napco butter pitcher. All right. Uh, jump into the sale. So number 12, the OvenX pie plate went to four Sandy's lilacs. So congratulations to uh, Sandy for picking that up. And uh, number 52, the coaster goes to Karen Dondelinger. So uh, congratulations, Karen. I'll be shipping that to San Francisco. All right. Uh, this was an item that I had also put on my preview um, on, on uh, Facebook, uh, uh, well, I did end up on Facebook too, but it, I started them on Instagram, uh, that got a lot of attention. And so I am sharing it here tonight. It is a shilling powdered time person, shelf sitter. So you've got the original, the time um, canister. So the original shilling uh, powdered time. It's got you know the uses for time. Got a pretty clean bottom, not a lot of oxidation. I believe that is the signature of the person who made it. I can't read that signature, but I do believe that's the signature of the person who made it. And what they've done is they've then wired at the bottom, they've wired into the bottom these little holes, a dangly wooden legs. So you can see they're kind of like high topped boots with the striped leggings, like it's kind of like an elf. Unfortunately, he does have condition issues. You can see they did the same thing for the arms, but he doesn't have uh, hands or gloves. So he does have hands on his face, but no. Uh, so his hands have snapped off, unfortunately. So they still dangle, but they just, they're clearly not finished because they should have something at the end as opposed to just the raw stumps that they are. Uh, so you've got the little bit of condition issue with the with the arms. And then the face, they did, I kind of ironically or, you know, uh, uh, pun-ally, it's time 
So they made gave him a clock face. So he is a time guy, you know, a can of time. And the head, the face is actually in pretty good condition. You know, the head is, is all on there. It looks, I mean, it's wired on there. It looks like that's the way it was originally designed to be. The hands are not broken on the face. You can see they still have a point on either end, but there's just some great patina around all the, all on all of the edges. Unfortunately, the patina was so big on the hands, they fell off, but he's a cute little time shelf sitter. And like I said, the legs kick out. So you can set, set him on a shelf. Time shelf, time shelf sitter is available. He's eight bucks. So $8 for the little time guy by giving me number five, number five for the little time guy, $8. All right, jumping into the chat and checking. So the butter pitcher number 23 went to Melody Harris. So congratulations, Melody, for picking that up. Um, and just checking really quick. So Michelle at Mermaid Cove is here. I mentioned your name the other earlier and I wasn't sure you were even here, Michelle. So hello, Michelle. Um, Oh, Mid-Century Wasted is here again. Thank you so much, um, Mid-Century Wasted. And I wanted to say I haven't finished everyone's videos from Nesting Haven's Thriftmas in July. If anyone doesn't follow Nesting Haven, definitely check out her channel. You can find a link to it in my playlist for my Thriftmas in July video. There are 38, I think, uh, eventually came up. Uh, Mid-Century Wasted had a really fun one. It has a, a picked up an awesome aluminum uh, Christmas tree, drove hours to get, uh, and just a bunch of other cool stuff. And all of the videos are fantastic. So definitely check those out. Thriftmas in July, it's all items that people have thrifted for Christmas and Mid-Century Wasted was pretty awesome. Uh, so thanks for uh, joining us. Um, thanks for joining us on the sale. All right, another oddball item that had I not had the instruction booklet that came with it, or that actually, I'm sorry, it didn't come with it. Somebody included it um, probably after they bought it, they had done the research. And so what it is, I'll show you the research first. What I found inside the item is this stapled set of paperwork that shows a patent application from 1940 for this aluminum cup. And what it is, it is a mixing cup. So it's a aluminum cup. It's got the a little lid on it. You can see there's kind of a design in the lid and there's also a design at the very bottom. And so according to the patent paperwork, those little designs are then when you swirl this to mix your whatever mixture, the little indentations at the bottom and the little indentations at the top help basically mix the liquids together in a more efficient way, I guess, you know, so that, so this, this is not, in my opinion, this is not vintage at all. This is something that I think somebody found this or had this in their collection and they did the research to figure out what it was. And then they just kind of included it. So I will include it as well. So it's just this nifty little, like, so it's kind of, I, I don't necessarily think you'd use it for cocktails because my cocktails are a lot bigger than this. So I, I, I'm not 100% sure if this was more of a scientific usage. Um, it's just designed to be, I, mean, I could see this in a laboratory, that this is really just designed to mix you know, liquids together. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a ding in the top. And if you've watched my show and channels before, you realize I don't like dings. I don't like damage. And if it's something that like actually what happened, I was prepping for the sale. I went to put a pepper pot out and it ended up having a huge crack running down that I didn't see It's in the pile for goodwill right now because there's hundreds of pepper pots. I'm not going to sell something that's not special. This is pretty special. So even though it's got a little ding, when you put the lid on, you don't see the ding. And I think it's pretty cool. So you've got this little patented mixing cup and he's nine bucks. So $9 for the little patented mixing cup by give me number three, number three, $9 for AJ Rachow liquid mixing shaker. Okay. Another item that I picked up from George. And again, this was at the uh, suggestion of Fatbird Finds, Thrifter Junker, Vintage Hunter. And I'm sorry, that is the second time I got her name right without screwing it up and Real Nifty Vintage was uh, at Georgia's sale was this container for eggs. Now, 
I tried to find these before because this does have a brand on the back. It's a three by four egg carton from Firebrand, Coast, well, Coast brand and then Firebrand products. I didn't have any luck finding this. So based on the, the graphics, this to me screams deco, but I don't like to say something's deco just because there's a bunch of angled lines on it. But this does seem to have some age to it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it goes back all the way to the twenties. It might be more modern. So like maybe we're into the forties, but I think realistically this could be that old. I don't think this is a sixties, seventies thing. Seventies, uh, they would have been a lot clunkier. So it still has the insert inside to divide the dozen eggs. So that is still there. It is a relatively, you can kind of see, on the, it's a relatively thin cardboard. So like I said, that's why I do think there's some age to it because as you got into the seventies, the cardboard got a lot, it would have been a lot thicker to give basically give it more protection. I mean, this will not protect a set of eggs at all. Like this I think would be one of those cases I could see a housewife, you know, carrying this with her to the farm or, you know, and buying, buying the eggs directly from the little greengrocer and then just carrying just this because you put this in with a gallon of milk or a pint of milk or whatever size freaking milk they had back then, you would have crushed any egg that was here because it's very thin, but it's very cool. So if you've got this aesthetic and you're doing vintage kitchen, I've never seen one before and before I bought it from George and I haven't seen one since. So it's a one dozen eggs container from Coast brand. It is available for seven bucks, $7 for the Coast uh, egg container by giving me number eight. Number eight, seven dollars for the egg container. All right. All right, I had a question. I thought the question was to me, but it was a question to Michelle, so never mind. Uh, all right, so checking up with the uh, chat again. So the aluminum mixing, um, the patented mixer went to Sandra Long. That was number three. So thank you, Sandra, for picking that up. And the little time guy, I went to. Uh, uh, Lorianne of Vintage Roots Collection, who did try and stake claim to it in the Instagram. She said that needed to be a part of her life. And congratulations, Lorianne. It is now, Mr. Time Guy is now a part of your life. So congratulations. Uh, and the, I think I already said 23, the butter pitcher went to Melody Harris. I think I already announced that one. And the eggs carton went to Sandra Runyon. So congratulations, Sandra. Thank you for buying from us, uh, buying from us again. Appreciate you uh, joining us one more time. See some of the some of the comments are now showing up in my Streamyard chat, so I hope to try and catch up a little bit. Uh, oh, Maria's here from California Thrifter, so thanks for joining us, Maria. Um, Becky Sue is a name I don't think I've recognized before, so I appreciate Becky Sue joining us, and Kim from All My Vintage. I think I might have said hello to you. Okay, another item that again. It was one of those items that I picked up relatively early, even though I say I don't do kitchen. I had one because I felt that this was a beautiful mustard pot. It's elegant glass. It's got the etching on there with that little circular daisy pattern. That's very popular. You know, we've had that in multiple pieces before. It has a copper lid, but the reason I had never listed it was because I didn't have the spoon. And so I'm assuming that the spoon probably would have been glass because I don't think a copper spoon, I don't think you'd want to put something copper in any condiment you would put in here, whether it's mustard or anything else that would destroy anything that was copper. So I'm assuming it needed to be glass and all the glass spoons that I found were too short. They didn't stick out far enough uh, to stick out. So I'd always like, I kind of had turned it into a mini project piece saying, oh, well maybe someday I'll come across a spoon and I'll be able to sell it and I'll get more money. At this point, I wanted to have something fun for the vintage uh, kitchen sale. I think this totally fits the bill. And I think this is one of those items that even if you don't do the traditional vintage, it's a beautiful piece, whether it goes in your curio cabinet, your dining room, your kitchen, and it's got the copper, which also is not as common. So you might still want to find a spoon or maybe you don't care about the spoon and you just use it as is because it's only $6. So $6 for the elegant glass and copper uh, mustard pot. Six bucks by giving me number 40, number 40, six dollars for the little mustard pot. And so Gabrielle White is saying her mom used one for fudge. That's the pie tin. Oh, that was for the pie tin. Oh, I'm like, I'm really behind. Okay, let's just scroll down a little bit further. Oh, hi, Rita. Um, 
Okay, so apologize that it's like it's coming in spurts. So I didn't realize I was way behind. All right, another item that I got from George. I like I said, doing the visit to George and basically being around Misty and Jeffrey and Laura and Mary Beth really gave me the the confidence to get involved or to get um, to dig deeper into Vintage Kitchen. So that is what I'm doing. I'm also in the process of opening a new booth at a new vintage mall uh, that'll be opening it, uh, in September. And I've decided that is actually going to be dedicated more to kitchen cocktails, things like that. Um, so why am I having a sale? But anyway, so I just, I picked up a bunch of different items. And so one of them that I picked up from George, I just thought was extremely cool. I had never seen these before or anything like this before. It is a set of, of sugar tongs. So it's got the little plunger on the top. So when you push the plunger, the tongs open up so you can grab the sugar cubes. Uh, Scott from the old curiosity shop just had a haul video that he called the fancy pants uh, countertop haul and everything was high end. This totally needed to be part of his collection because I can't imagine anything uh, bougier than having a set of tongs specifically for sugar cubes. I can't imagine anyone's going to use that for that, that now. I just think this is going to look like a very cool piece because I believe it is silver plated. I couldn't find any marks to it, but you can see how much tarnish is on here. And once again, something like a bougie sugar cube grabber, um, you wouldn't be surprised it's silver plated. So like with that kind of patina and that kind of look, I think this would just look great in a lot of different vignettes. Or you know you can use it to grab other things. Maybe you're not grabbing sugar. Maybe you'll grab something else. But I thought this was super cool. Thanks to George, the Antique Nomad, for making it available to me, and I make it available to you for ten bucks. So ten dollars for the little uh, uh, sugar tongs. Ten dollars by giving me number sixty-three. Number sixty-three. Ten dollars for the sugar tongs. All right. Let's see if we can get to the end of the chat again. Carrie, hello, Carrie, welcome. Oh, and Laura's popped back in again, shocking. She's playing her competitive pool tonight, so it's an honor that she has uh, joined us. Hey, Steve from Brick House. Oh, Nate's here. Always like when Nate's when Nate when Nate comes in, because it's probably like what, what what is it like two o'clock in the afternoon there tomorrow. So <laughs> it's just weird. Uh, all right, so we've got. Um, oh, and one of the suggestions was it could be an olive grabber, which that actually makes it. I don't know. That makes it more versatile. Maybe. I don't know, though, if the olive juice, how that handles with the silver plating. Maybe. I, I don't know. Like, sugar tongs made a lot of sense. And that's what George said. So if George says it, it must be true. Because my life is built around what would George do. So George said they're sugar tongs. I believe they're sugar tongs. I am one with George. So uh, number 40, the mustard pot with the copper lid went to Four Sandy's Lilacs. So congratulations uh, for that. Number eight, the egg carton went to Sandra Runyon. I think I already said that one. And number 63, the sugar tongs went to Melody Harris. So congratulations, Melody, for picking those up. Um, Jeannie is saying hello to somebody named Bradley. I don't know anybody named Bradley. Bradley's new. Bradley's new. Well, welcome, Bradley. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and Cindy's here from Mimi's Treasure Cottage. Randy's here. Hello. Uh, all right. So again, I apologize for those that I've missed. My, I do think my chat is still a little bit messed up, but I'm, I'm trying to get caught up. All right. Let's jump into another textile. Uh, so this is one that this might be shifting a little bit into bathroom as opposed to kitchen, but they're towels and I'm selling these as a pair. You can see they are not identical, but they are clearly designed to go together. So this one has a purple bow and you know predominantly the purple and then the cornflower blue in the flowers. And then the flower underneath in the center is a lavender. This one has more of a powder blue bow and the flower underneath is more of a marigold goldenrod color. So you've got to, they're clearly you know related. Um, and I picked them up together. So I mean, I do, they, they were at one point, you know, they, they went in the same place. So it's a, it's a little tea towel, a little hand towel. Like I said, probably maybe more designed for a guest bath, uh, cause they look a little dainty. I don't think you're necessarily drying your towels with this, but the, the, the country aspect of the linen, you know, this is a very rough grade 
linen background. You can see the nap, uh, the napping, you know, in there, but it's been treated extremely well. So you can see it's got the, um, the separated stitch hem. It has the raw salvage end M on the other side. This is the shallow hem. This is the deep hem. And then the design, you know, in the middle. Now this one, unfortunately, I didn't bring my flashlight. Actually, you know what? I have my phone. So let me use a flashlight. You can see maybe, and eh, no, you can't. There are in some places where it's been stitched, you can see that the stitching has actually created an eyelet in that purple flower and it's on design. So, you know, this, there was, so we got, again, some very good care in making these at the time they were made. There's a little bit, but not much. There's a little bit of discoloration where they've been folded that I do believe just, you know, probably a treatment with OxyClean would probably take care of that. But I did not try this. I did not want to do anything to the thread of those flowers that might make them run. So just be aware they're, they're both, they've both been folded in this way, probably for a very long time. And they just have a little bit of discoloration, particularly where the folds are. But I'm selling them as a pair. I'm only selling them for six bucks. So hopefully a little investment in some OxyClean will uh, help take care of you. Six dollars for the pair of uh, tea towels by giving me number 64. So number 64 for the pair of tea towels for six dollars. All right. This again was an item that I picked up fairly early on because at the time I picked it up, I thought they were worth a little bit more money. They're not, but they're, it's a perfect item for a uh, kitchen sale. So this has just been sitting in a box waiting for me to do something with it and I'm going to make it available. So it's one of those uh, kitchen trivets. I will be perfectly honest at once upon a time, uh, Misty from Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter has a collection of these and I'm like, oh, hey, you know what? I'll send it to Misty. And I am not kidding. Within like a week of thinking I was going to send it to Misty because she has a collection of these. She showed part of her collection and this was in it. So Misty didn't need another one. So it's literally just been sitting in a box waiting for me to give it a home or find somebody else to give it a home. And that's what I'm hoping will happen tonight. So it is one of those black iron metal um, trivets. All the legs are still present. Um, you, do, it, you do have the hook at the top if you wanted to hang it or you can use it as a hot plate trivet. It has the phrasing on it that says, come in, sit down, relax, converse. Our house doesn't always look like this. Sometimes it's even worse. So it's one of those phrases that I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. It's, you know, it's a, it's a simple little design. It's the white ink on the black background and then the little homestead at the top with the trees is painted yellow. It's very cheap or it's very sweet, very cheap. It's only four bucks. So, and it's actually not that heavy. So shipping is not, I mean, uh, is, this is not like a huge cast iron piece. It's probably cast aluminum because uh, it's really lightweight. So it's four bucks, $4 for the little uh, house trivet. They give me number 55, 55, $4 for the little house trivet. All right. We're going to show another George founded piece because this was something that probably was the, the individual unit that decided I was going to be doing a, a vintage kitchen sale. I found this before anybody else did. I thought Misty was going to strike me over the head and rip it out of my hands, but I found it. And as we talked about it, I found it from just a super goofy, wow, I can't believe this set of paper towels is, is you know, still wrapped up and unavailable and weighs over a pound. This one roll of paper towels weighs 1.36 pounds. I, it's insane. Like this, like if, if a case of these fell on your head, you'd die. So I don't remember paper towels being this thick and this heavy. And so we were joking about it and they're like, you're getting it right. I'm like, well, I don't know, maybe. And they said, oh no, that's going to sell. You need to sell it. And they were, they really started trying to educate me of what things are worth and what things sell for. When I started looking things online, it was insane how much some of these were selling for. And there aren't that many of them, I guess, because they're paper towels. Why would anyone keep a thing of paper towels? But this is kind of cool. You know, so it's linenized. Um, it has the copyright on the bottom is 1934. So these paper towels have sat around for a really long time. 
nobody's used them. And it's why I don't remember them being this heavy when I was a kid, because I wasn't a kid in 1934. I'm not that old. So it's got the trademark patent office. I mean, everything on the wrapper is still there. There's a little bit of roughness, you know, at the top where some of the, the edge has peeled away from it. But I would too, if I was this old. So it's just a really cool piece. George gave me a really good price on it. So I'm trying to pass it off as a really good price too, because I think somebody else might appreciate this more than I will. Uh, and I just think it's kind of cool. And I don't want to put something like this in my booth because I have a feeling it would get torn apart, not on purpose, but like the more it gets handled, the more what these condition issues are having, the more they're going to have. So I'm really trusting somebody will give this a really good home. And so I try to price it in a fair price based on what George gave me as a fair price, passing it, pay it forward. So it's $11. So $11 for the great, it was a great Northern, no, Northern handy towels that have been linenized. $11 if I give me number 30. Number 30, $11 for the over pounds worth of paper towels. All right, and catching up with the chat. Number 64, the embroidered tea towels went to <laughs> Vintageous. Vin vintageous. Vin vintigerous. No, Vintad. Vintage are us. Sorry, vintage glass in China. If you want to spell that out phonetically, I'll try and do better next time. Uh, vintage Russ, vin vintage Russ. Vin I, okay, now I'm obsessed. All right. Anyway, congratulations, vintage Russ. Got 64 of the embroidered tea towels, and number 55, the black iron trivet went to um, Mar well, actually Maria, the California thrifter, is picking it up, but she is asking us to ship it to D. So that is very kind of her. We've had a couple people doing that now, uh, and I think that's very sweet uh, when people when the community supports each other. So hopefully D will give it a good home. Uh, so that was 55. The uh, black um, home trivet went to technically Maria, but she is gifting it to D. So congratulations to D and thank you to Maria. All right. If you signed on early enough, uh, you would have seen that I did a... Um, a little different of an intro. If you go back and watch the uh, replay, you'll see um, the, uh, it's a kind of a calendar of events. I created a, a PowerPoint slide with a lot of what's happening at, on my channel this month. And one of the deep dives that I have scheduled for this month is on swizzle sticks. So it's kind of a, a little cute preview. I have a pair of what I'm assuming are swizzle sticks in kind of the tiki, tiki torch, tiki culture, tiki couture. One of them is in perfect condition. So you've got that weird big beaked bird. I'm sure he has a name. I, again, not known for my nature, flora and fauna. Um, it has the, the fancy tail on it, striped stick, and then the stripes go all the way down to the bottom. He is in pristine condition. This one, is very cool looking and in pristine condition from this side. You know, he's still got all of his feathers. He's still got his beak. Unfortunately, when I purchased him, I thought that was sticker residue. So I really didn't think anything of it when I bought it. And then when I came home and took the tape apart because they were taped together and I've and tried to clean off the sticker residue, I actually realized that is actually paint loss. So unfortunately, he is damaged. But I decided that I shouldn't separate him from his brother. So we've got the two birds that are cocktail sticks. You can have them for your own collection and you can be all prepared for the deep dive that's coming up on August 23rd. That is with Rebecca from Kitchy and Bitchy. And she will be doing her deep dive on swizzle sticks. And trust me, I will have a lot of swivel sticks. I've got some really fun things planned that the Huckster Helper is really glad she's going back to school so she doesn't have to deal with it. Uh, so anyway, so we've got the little tiki cocktail sticks. They are available as the pair for $5. $5 for the little tiki cocktail sticks. $5 by giving me number 51. $5, number 51. All right. So, okay. Well, let's start with the easy one. So number 30, the paper towels went to Sandra Long. So congratulations, Sandra. Okay. Now I have the phonetic spelling. Vin, Tidge, Er, Us. Vintage or us. 
Vintage, vintage or, but I've been giving it all in caps, so I don't know which which <laughs> which syllable to emphasize. So vin, vintigerous, vintigerous, vintigerous. No, it's not tig because it's tag. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm obsessed again. We're stopping. Moving on. All right, another preview that I gave. Um, and trust me, no one can pronounce trusty huckster mercantile either. So I am not casting stones at your glass house, Miss or Mister Vintigerous. So. Um, <laughs> I just started a campaign to uh, tell everyone there's no H in the word mercantile because I did have to change my email address because a shockingly number of people did not know how to spell mercantile. Uh, and another, another very large number of people didn't know what a huckster was. So, you know, we're all educating each other. Uh, so again, on my uh, Instagram page, I did another preview post and that actually included this uh, piece of art pottery. It is a signed piece of art pottery. I do not recognize the studio signature. It is dated 1999, and there's kind of like a GP in the upper left-hand corner right above the 99. So I don't know if this is a student piece. I don't know if it's, a, if it's a, a studio piece. If it's a student piece, this person's going on to some really big, big things because there is some amazing detail in here that unless you're familiar with pottery, you would not necessarily notice. So you can see it has the double rim going into it. It has the recessed crest on the shoulder. It has the, um, the drip spout is the way the lines stop going into the spout is just, it's a very defined spot. It didn't just kind of end um, some really nice banding. And the main reason I bought it, the state bird of, of Minnesota, the mosquito is taking pride of place. Now I was, a comment was made on my Instagram that they did not see a mosquito. Now, unfortunately, I can't remember who made the comment. It was a name I recognized, but I can't remember who made it. They didn't actually say what they thought it was. To me, the minute I saw it, it was a mosquito. So it has that weird long nose coming off. It does have wings. It's doing something weird down with its legs. It's kind of like going like in a mermaid leg thing. I don't know if it's supposed to be in the grasses or what it is. Um, I don't think it's a dragonfly. Uh, Nate uh, posted a uh, image on his Instagram, uh, which is nathaniel.johnson.164, something like that. Some a random set of numbers that I don't remember because it's a normal is 1969 Nathaniel and it was in 1969. But anyway, he had posted a dragonfly, a stylized dragonfly on a silver spoon. And so that made me think, well, maybe this is a dragonfly because his dragonfly had a curved tail, which I didn't know dragonflies did. And then I thought maybe his dragonfly was a mosquito. So I'm on a uh, mission to uh, identify all mosquitoes of the world. So I don't know if this is a mosquito or not. To me, this is a mosquito. So people are saying it's a hummingbird, which to be perfectly honest, makes a hell of a lot more sense <laughs> because that is a flower. And so his very long beak is fitting into the flower. I, I stick with mosquito though, because I think it makes it far more entertaining. But if you want to give Mr. Mosquito slash Miss, Mr. Hummingbird or Miss Hummingbird a home, you can do so uh, by giving me $10. So $10 for the art pottery mosquito hummingbird pitcher. And you can get him by claiming him with number 14. So number 14, I still think it's much more fun to think he's a mosquito which I honestly thought he was, but now I think, now I see it hummingbird and I'm just, I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm, de I'm depressed. Thank you all very much. I wanted to think that was a mosquito. Um, Huckster Helper did camp for 10 years in Minnesota. And, you know, sometimes we thought the mosquitoes were going to carry her away. Um, so anyway, and so uh, going on to the next item, let's throw another textile. So got another apron I mentioned. I got three aprons. And um, I think we've I've started a new drinking game, which will be continued on the uh, the um, deep dive. Swizzle sticks, swizzle sticks, swizzle sticks, swizzle sticks, swizzle sticks. So yes, I'm a grown up. All right, so we've got another apron. Now this one is the style that the um, the neck part is actually uh, you tie it. So it's, you, you can have the biggest hair you want and you'll still be able to get this over your head. So this has the ties in the back. It has the gray body, kind of like a topish gray. It's still for probably more of a short-waisted individual because again, this is where it's hitting me and my waist is here. So it's a little bit longer than the other one. It's significantly longer in the drape though 
So this does go pretty far down. And this one has very two very large pockets with the fleur-de-lis designs on both of them. There's some really nice detail in the way the um, belting was attached. I don't believe this is handmade. When you start looking really closely, the stitches seem really uniform, particularly in the hemming uh, for the seams. So I do believe this was a machine made piece. Uh, oh, hi, look at the label. I never saw that before. So, all right, yeah, it's, it's uh, now we're questioning whether it's even vintage, but it's a brand that I can't pronounce. Sur la table, sur la tab table. I learned Russian and I've got the German sitting over my shoulder. So we don't know French. Um, so anyway, this is not even vintage. Oops. So um, do I want to change the price? Yes, I'm going to change the price. So it's still a cool apron. It's just from a very expensive, ritzy, boozy French store. So, but there's really no question anymore that's not handmade. So you can look like a French maid too with the uh, little French fleur-de-lis on, on, the, on the pockets. And it would have been $8, but is now $6. So $6 for the uh, fleur-de-lis apron, $6 for number 32. So 32, $6 for the sur la table, table, les miserables, um, table uh, apron. And if... Um, Anyway, all right, let's go to everyone's favorite. No, you know what? I don't want to lose her. Melody is here, and Melody had uh, sent a request asking. Well, I did a request. She just asked if I was going to have one, and I do. So I want to make sure I hit that before she has to leave. Um, wooden handled vintage kitchen tools. So we've got this one. It says right on the side, it is a rapid shortening mixer. So I didn't know, I've seen these before. I actually didn't know that that's what this was for. I thought this was more like you would mix the butter into the flour. Like it was more like not really a whisk. It was more like to chop the butter into it. So this is actually, which I guess you can still use it for, but it's literally, it's branded as a shortening mixer, patent pending. So it has the green wooden handle, which Melody shared a, a, a photograph of her collection of wood, uh, green wooden handled tools. I think this would look lovely in that collection, but she's got you. She's gonna have to try and beat everybody to it. So this is a uh, shortening mixer. It is available for six dollars. Six dollars for the green wood handle shortening mixer by giving me number forty-one. Go Melody. Go Melody. Go Melody. Forty-one. Six dollars for the wooden handled shortening mixer. All right, fell behind in the chat a little bit. All right. All right, so Kelly, of course, is correcting me, sur la table. So it's 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 like people that argue about how to pronounce les miserables. Uh, all right, um, 32, the fleur de lis gray apron at the reduced price, since it's not vintage, goes to Michelle at Mermaid Cove and finally sending something to California that's not going to break. Um, and Michelle at Comfy Cozy says tab. Well, that's kind of the same. Tob, tob, tob. All right. Um, and I'm assuming vintage, vintageous, vintageous, uh, vintageous is uh, real name is Joni. So I'm going to go with that. So hello, Joni, and thank you for purchasing. All right. So the uh, wooden handled mixer is now gone. And we are now up to the piece I was about to grab earlier. And it is the um, everyone's favorite, Holt Howard. Now, I do not get Holt Howard very often. Um, it's, it's. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily like it's rare, but for whatever reason, where everyone else has a hard time finding Hager, I can fill dump trucks filled with Hager because it was built, made 10 miles down the, house, down the street from my house. Holt Howard, I don't know if it's a regional thing. I don't know where it was big. I really just don't come across it very often. But when I saw the creamer, I was like, oh, that's really nice. That's a nice creamer. I should look at it. And I looked at the bottom, I realized it was Holt Howard. So it's Holt Howard from 1966. So not what everyone thinks of for Holt Howard, but it's the quality of a Holt Howard piece. So this is again, uh, kind of similar to the butter pitcher. This is one of those cases where there's multiple versions of this one. So when you compare to things online, this is just something to keep in mind. 
when you compare it online, the the number of stripes is a fairly consistent measuring tool to know what you are comparing yourself to. Because in photographs, because Holt Howard is a very uh, higher quality manufacturer, the in a photograph, the taller version of this and the smaller version of this look identical. A lot of times, you know, when you look at a miniature, you can tell there's something weird about it. Like the curve is weird or the handle's not on the right because it's just difficult to shrink things and, and change sizes. So usually the best way, like anytime you want to look at purchasing a miniature basket, the best thing you can do is take a photograph of the basket. And if looking at your photograph, you can't tell it's miniature, it's a high quality basket. And that sounds stupid. You'd think you'd be able to figure that out just by looking at it. And sometimes you can't. Um, so keep in mind that the different size pictures, if, you, like, if you're looking at this, you can look at the size of my hand, but you can also say this is a four striped picture. And so that makes it one of the smaller of the, they have the larger sizes that go up from that. But Hold Howard is an attractive brand and even the small stuff is collectible. And in some cases more collectible because it's small. So you can actually put this in a vignette and not run out of room on the shelf. You can put other things along with it. So I, I kind of paid up for it because I knew what it was and evidently the seller did too. Um, but I still felt I could make something out of it, but I still wanted to try and be competitive uh, and give everyone a good deal. So hopefully, you know, if you're a Holt Howard fan, you like the looks of it, you want to add a striped creamer to your collection and you can do so by giving me 15 bucks. So $15 for the Holt Howard uh, creamer, four striped creamer by giving me number 19. Number 19, $15 for the yellow four stripe creamer. All right, so number 41, the hand mixer with the green handle went to Melody Harris. She was successful. So she did throw down and took you all out. So congratulations, Melody. All right. As I mentioned before, if you've seen my channel before, you know I'm, you know, big thing into coasters. I own it. And coasters come in many shapes, sizes, and styles. Here is a big one. So this one, it's Hampton Court. So all of our Anglophiles can fall in love. It's a very cool design. It is the style of a Pimpernel uh, coaster slash uh, placemat. It, this one, though, is not marked. So it could be Pimpernel, it could be Cloverleaf. There's a couple of different places that make this style. And unfortunately, I don't know all the different styles yet, and I couldn't find this one. So it basically, it is what it is. It's a small placemat. It is a small coaster. It is felted, uh, or I'm sorry, a large coaster, a small placemat, large coaster. It is has the felt on the back, and it has the laminated top that, again, kind of like a Pimpernel style. I don't know. It is very rigid. This is not like a it's not like a cardboard, but it's also just kind of a laminated wood. I think you could put something hot on here. Like I think you could use this as a trivet. I just wouldn't test it with something like fresh from the, you know, campfire. Um, because I'm not sure how the laminate would hold up. So it's, it's, it can, it's basically, it is a trivet. I mean, that's what it's designed for, because I'm sorry, whose meals are this small, unless you're two? And if you're two, do you really care about Hampton Court? Um, so I, this is a trivet, you know, I'm just trying to be honest with you in the sense that it's not like a metal trivet. It's, it would have some limitations, but it's very cool. It's a big coaster. I had to have it and I had to pass it on to you guys for six bucks. So $6 for the Hampton Court Pimpernel style uh, coaster slash trivet by giving me number 42, 42, $6 for the Pimpernel style trivet. All right, uh, number 19, the Holt Howard went to Comfy Cozy Living. All right, Michelle, congratulations. See, I'm not making you go broke. You only, that's the first thing you bought for me tonight. So I hope, uh, I hope you'll give it a good home and I know it will look great with some of the decor that you've got. All right, uh, I think this is the only creamer and sugar I had, I guess I had a creamer earlier, but this is like a cream sugar set that I thought was really kind of cool. It's one of those stacked styles that uh, it is not stamped. It has the feel and the, the weight and style of a typical Japan piece, but it is not marked Japan. It is redware. You can see the color of the pottery sticking out from where it was not glazed. So it is redware. Redware has nothing to do with the gray glaze color, although typically it is glazed brown. Um, it's the clay color. So this is redware. Now, this one does have a rim on the uh, bottom of the sugar. 
that I believe they're designed to set this way because the creamer, otherwise the spot of the creamer would fit weird sticking out from the sugar. So I think they're allowed to go with this. I think there might have been either a small teapot or a small tea cup or coffee cup that might have also sat with this, but this sits perfectly fine on its own and no one would know. I don't even know if it's part of a set. I suspect it's part of a set because that's something they were doing you know, into the 90s, 2000s. You would do that little stacked set. This is older than that. I don't know if they had it that way, but even if it's not, it still would look cool. Uh, it is a functional, you know, you want to do sugar and creamer. It becomes a covered sugar with an open creamer. It would just, again, though, look great in any vignette. So the Redware sugar and creamer set with a little uh, white and blue floral design is available for eight bucks. Eight dollars for the creamer and sugar by giving me number 15. Number 15, eight dollars for the little Redware creamer and sugar. All right, got the last towel. I've only got a few, few items left and then Trusty's Bargain Bin is coming out. So we're only gonna do the bargain bins anymore. We're doing them on the themed sale night. So today is a themed sale. So we're gonna have the bargain, the trusty, trusty's bargain bin where everything will be two bucks. So I've only got a handful of things left and we'll jump into the bargain bin. All right, this is another, this is actually a very large size towel. Uh, these, uh, this is the, um, I, there's a name for it and I couldn't, I couldn't think of the name. The style of towel is something that they still sell. I bought it from my uh, former mother-in-law for Christmas a couple of years ago because they're just a really nice quality, also lint-free uh, type of cloth. But this one has been embroidered with a little Dutch, uh, female Dutch figure uh, down in the bottom with her wine jug. I don't know what she's doing, uh, carrying her little tulip because, you know, we are generalists and we must put, uh, every Dutch person must carry a freaking tulip. So this is, again, a piece that, I'll just show you the stitching so you can make your own decision. I think because of this uh, stitching that is on her dress, I think this is machine made, but there's a couple places where it's very sloppy. So it's possible it was machine done, but then it, the stitches came out, so they fixed it. Um, so the, you know, but you don't need to get obsessed on the back. If you just look at the front, it's very clean on the front. There's no loose stitches. There's, it's, it's just a very quaint design and it's only in the corner. This is a very large towel. And so the entire towel is plain except for the little corner down at the end. And is it is large, but let me actually measure it. It is 33 inches across. So it's a 33 inch square. So the little Dutch girl um, dish towel is available for five bucks. So $5 for the little embroidered Dutch girl. And you can have it by giving me number 50. Number 50, five bucks for the embroidered Dutch girl dishcloth. All right, uh, jump in, fell back in the chat. So the mosquito slash hummingbird picture went to Monica Delgado. She's one of my favorite um, customers for, uh, she buys a lot of our pottery. So she loves when I do pottery. So I'm glad that the piece of art pottery is going to Monica Delgado. Uh, number 35, the set of cookie press. Yeah, I just forgot about the chat. Okay. Uh, we just went a little out of order. I thought I was having an aneurysm. Uh, so number 35 went to Margaret Johnson. That was a set of cookie um, cookie presses. Oh, Laura put down her pool cue long enough to buy the Hampton Court mat. So that was number 42. Goes to Laura Bemos. Congratulations. And the creamer, uh, Redware creamer and sugar went to Michelle at Mermaid Cove because, of course, I have to buy something that will break on the way to California. So uh, congratulations, Michelle, for picking up the Redware creamer and sugar. All right, uh, this is a piece that I tried to, I did Google Lens, I tried to find whatever I could. The, you know how hard it is to find something when the, the only term you've got is farmhouse or farm? Yeah, so this is a spoon rest. You can tell it's a spoon rest because where the sun is, it's actually, deep, it's like recessed. So like that is where the spoon would go. So it is a spoon rest. It's kind of got a cool stylized, you know, farm, silo, barn, you know, design. It's not marked on the back. And initially I'm thinking, mm, you know, it may not be all that old, but if you look, 
there's actually quite a bit of crazing that I think is natural. I don't think it's something they created because it's on the back. On the front, there actually isn't any crazing. So unless somebody got the instructions wrong, I guess it was a little bit in the sun, but where the pale part is, which is what is on the back, there isn't crazing. So unless some little lackey crazed it wrong, um, I do think there's some age to this. It's a decent amount of weight, not like super heavy. Um, it's, you know, you got the unglazed part, you know, when it was fired. And what I also found interesting that this was recessed so much, they actually had to take the glaze off the bottom because when it sat flat, this hits the bottom of the kiln as well. So this is a pottery ceramic piece, not a porcelain piece. They had to keep the, they didn't use stilt marks. They just didn't finish. So it's a, it's a high production piece, not an art studio piece. It's, I thought it just looked cool. It definitely goes into a kitchen. I think it's vintage because of the crazing. So I'm putting it in my vintage kitchen sale and I'm selling it for four bucks. So if you're interested in the little farmhouse uh, spoon rest for $4, give me number 54. 54, put it the right side up, 54, $4 for the little farmhouse spoon rest. All right, my last textile is also something I put on my uh, Instagram. I desperately now need to check to make sure there's no label on it that's not from Sewer the Tub. And it doesn't look like it is because to me, this is a pretty distinct look, uh, you know, uh, of, I would say of the 50s. I mean, this is to me the epitome of a hostess apron. It's the obviously sheer, because you can see right through it. It's the sheer decorative. Um, uh, I don't know if this is chiffon. I'm not sure what the fabric would be. There's no, there is no label on it. I do believe it was machine made because the stitching on the end, it's like kind of that, um, if it feels like, fuzzy like fur like i don't know and it's and it's like woven into it. it's not stitched on it's not surged but i don't see that this is something somebody did at home so and the the flowers appear to be applique flowers or like pressed on flowers as opposed to stitched i'm not finding any stitching on any of the decorated pieces so i think this is a produced piece it's got a really cool it goes all the way down to a point all the way down at the bottom and it's decorated the whole time. And there are two, just showed you backwards, but it doesn't matter because it's the same. And there are two very large pockets on the front. Now I don't know what you'd put in there because they're sheer. So whatever you put in there, you'd see, but you can see they're floral pockets. And because it's become a thing, I will put it on. It's long enough that it, it can go around my fat ass without having a problem to tie in the back. So it's a fairly long drop. And it's a very, very attractive piece. So this was something I also picked up at the estate sale. I knew it would look great on camera and I knew it'd be great um, and you guys would be interested in it. So the Vintage Hostess apron is nine bucks. Nine dollars for the red and white Vintage Hostess apron if I give me number 46. Number 46, nine dollars for the apron. All right, two things left. This is one that um, I was hoping George could help me identify. Unfortunately, we didn't get to have any luck. And so I just, I'm just going to sell them here because I just thought they were cool. I had them in a haul video. So some people have seen these before. I picked these up. These are fairly, there's fairly decent uh, weight to these. They've got a metal base and you see they're kind of like three leaves, you know, that form a little pedestal. And then you've got, again, the top that, you know, everyone says, well, it's probably Bakelite. But because I don't happen to have four, uh, 409 right now, I can't test it. I sniff the heck out of it, and I still just don't smell anything um, that's chemical, which makes me think maybe it's not Bakelite. But the style of these, particularly this one, and this is the this is the hesitation on these. One of these looks like it is kind of the original metal, and this one appears to possibly been shined. Now, I put these in a haul video and somebody said that actually this one was probably the salt and this one was the pepper and the salt corroded the base. That was fascinating and also bizarre because, you know, I've heard of metal salt shakers before and this is far too uniform for if this had just been an oxidation of some salt spilling off on the sides. So I think that it, it they both looked like this at one point and then somebody tried to shine one up 
and maybe didn't like the way they, it looked and they wanted to keep the original. I don't know, but I don't know how to return this one to look like this. And I'm not 100% sure how this one got to look like this. So I'm selling them as a set. I think I just, it's one of those cases, sometimes when you buy something, you just have this feeling that it is something special. I can't find these anywhere. I can't find an example of them because I don't know the material. Now I'm obsessed with Vinny's 409 tips. So I'm going to have to go follow vintage Vinny's su suggestion and start test pouring 409 on every piece of plastic in my house. It's like what I do when I got a blue light. I saw, try to find things that, blue, that glowed. Uh, anyway, so I'm passing them on here. I'm hoping somebody will give them a good home. True definition of vintage kitchen. Unfortunately, I don't have a better story to go with them because I don't know what they are, but I'm trying to pass them on for 12 bucks. So for twelve dollars, I'm hoping somebody be willing to give them a good home because uh, I paid up for them. But without knowing what they are, I don't feel I can do more. So twelve dollars for the pair. Twenty-eight is the number. Twenty-eight, twelve dollars for the pair of uh, red something and metal-based salt and pepper shakers. All right, catch up on the chat really quick. So forty-six, the red and white apron went to Michelle. Comfy, cozy living. So congratulations. Add that to the mix. Uh, 54, the Sunrise Spoon Rest went to Crafty Jackie. Uh, thank you for giving that a good home, Crafty Jackie. Uh, number 50, the Dutch Girl Towel uh, Dutch Girl Towel went to Vintage Funky Junk. Uh, congratulations. And um, I had another aneurysm. The Tiki Swizzle Sticks from 20 minutes ago went to Karen Don the Linger. At, uh, that was number 51. And number 28... Okay, sorry, I can't even read my own handwriting. 28, the uh, red and metal salt and pepper shakers went to Michelle at Mermaid Cove. So, all right, last item. And this has shown up in Kelly had these. Misty had these. I think Jeffrey had these. I don't like to be a lemming. So I did something different. I found a variation. So I've got pepper. And I've got salt okay so i don't have peppy i don't have the, the cute the cute name ones they have their tag that says nc japan that when i initially thought it said no japan which i thought was mean <laughs> but so ng nc japan so it's the original foil label okay very cute very collectible people love them but look what else i got a murder weapon so I have, she doesn't have a name. I think it's a she, she's a mall. Um, so we've got, we've got the gangster wife with the, the knife uh, so she can shiv somebody. Um, so anyway, we don't have the name at the top or if it was named, it's not there anymore. Uh, but she's got the same um, anthropomorphic, you know, face of the piece of wood. Now, salt looks a little angry, looking a little peeved. Also looking like a bow tie. And now I'm wondering, is that a bow tie? No, the hair has got to be a woman on this one. Maybe it's a hippie. I don't know. Uh, so you've, you've got the weird face on the salt. You've got the sleepy kissy face on the pepper. So they made the pepper the female. And then this one's just sinister. You know, this is just like, I've, I've got my eyes on you. So I'm assuming this is a cheese fork or cheese, I'm sorry, cheese knife. Because it has this little double... Um, blade to just like pick up the cubes of cheese. To be perfectly honest, I actually don't know what this is for. Oh, so Amelia, my newly turned 21 year old just told me that it's a bottle opener. They'll, they'll be a little disturbed by that for a while. Um, I don't know why you put it. So maybe it's not a cheese fork unless, cause you're not cracking bottles of cap bottles of wine. Uh, so maybe it's not for cheese. So I do, that does make sense. It's a bottle opener. So I don't know what kind of tool Shiv girl is supposed to be but I've got them as a set. So I've got the salt and pepper shaker, I've got the shiv, and you can have all three of them for 10 bucks. $10 for the three wooden pieces by giving me number seven. Number seven, salt and pepper shaker, and the knife slash bottle opener slash murder weapon. So it's number seven, $10. All right, that was the last item from the regular sale. And now we've got Trusty's bargain bin. Okay, so here's the deal with the bargain bin for anyone who's not been here before. Everything in the bargain bin is $2 each. So there is no question, it is all $2.
I will give you letters this time instead of numbers, but they will not have prices on them because everything, say it with me, is $2. There is one item I will start with, which is a grab bag, uh, which means I have multiple versions of the item. In this actual case, I have multiples of the exact item. And so in the first case, I have a <laughs> one of my favorite items for the entire sale, and that's how juvenile I am. I have a Hostess Cupcake carrying case. It's a little hinged plastic box to hold your Hostess Cupcake. The, I needed this in my life. So I found actually a couple of things about this fascinating. So it is branded, a Hostess item branded, it says right on the bottom where it's from. But what, what I also found interesting because this is where we all start falling into, we're getting older and we don't remember things. This has a website on it, but then it also has a copyright of 2001. And so it's one of those like, oh my God, did the website, I did the internet exist in 2001? So of course it did. Uh, but it's one of those connections that you think like this is basically right on the cusp of being the definition of Etsy's definition of vintage. But anytime I'd see a website on something, I'm like, oh yeah, that's gotta be like five years old. <laughs> so the fact that there were websites on items almost 20 years ago, actually somewhat disturbing, but you know the drill. So this is an individual cupcake holder. I have eight of these. So the first eight people who want a cupcake holder for $2, so you too can live your, relive your childhood. Um, and I'm sorry, I eat cupcakes all the time. So I'm, this is in my childhood. $2, be the first eight people. If you want more than one, you are welcome to more than one, but you need to enter the number or the letter I'm going about to give you. You need to enter it more than once. So in some cases, we let you do a multiple. In this case, if you want more than one, you will enter this letter as many times as you can. And the first eight that we receive on our end, will get them. And the first eight people we see with the letter E. So the letter E gets you the Hostess Cupcake Carrier. They're all identical. They're all in the bag. You can see they're all right here. They're all identical. They're all hinged. They're all fun as can be. So two bucks each for the little host Hostess Carrier by giving me letter E. All right, so while Huckster Helper's head explodes because she loves grab bags. Uh, you mind the next item? Sure. All right, the next item is a, was it kind of a disappointment for me, unfortunately. Um, it was an item that I purchased online as part of a larger batch of items that um, I was trying to do. Like sometimes you, I buy extra things that I want to resell because then it kind of divides up the cost of the freight. So it was one of those things that they, they had this little toothpick holder in the shape of a three-handled loving cup. And it says Hartford on the bottom. It definitely has some age. It was when it was made, it was made very well because there's multiple seam lines on it. So it was made with multiple molds, but it is a molded piece. It does say Hartford in gold. It does have the gold flake, you know, on the inside and a little bit left on the handles. Unfortunately, what the seller did not disclose is there is damage right there in the why can I not get to show? There we go. It's only on one side of the handle. So when it was photographed, it was photographed from the back side, and I did not see that crack. It does not go all the way through, but there is some glass missing from the edge. And so it's one of those cases that it's just it's a it's a Hartford toothpick holder. It doesn't have a huge amount of value to begin with. I didn't pay a lot for it, but when you start throwing in that I did still pay shipping for it. I'm selling it for two bucks. So I'm basically selling it probably for less than I actually ended up paying for it simply because I don't want to, I don't want to deal with something that's damaged like that, but this would look great in a lot of vignettes. A lot of people like just ask vintage Vinny if it's not already uh, showing some damage, it means it doesn't have any character. Now I don't necessarily agree with that, but it, this can be given a good home. So this was one of those that if I knew if I gave it to Goodwill, it'd probably be completely destroyed. So you can give it a good home for two bucks by giving me letter M. So letter M, $2 for the Loving Cup style toothpick holder. And I missed the uh, last items. Yes, that's we don't do that. No, 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 from the regular sale. So numbers, the, from the re previous sale, the, the salt, pepper, and the shiv went to uh, Michelle at Comfy Cozy Living. 
Um, and Vintage Funky Junk says the knife could be a sausage skinner. Ooh, I like the way your mind works. And that would explain that little hook part because that's how you need to strip the sausage casing. Ooh, I like that idea. I've never heard of one, but if they don't exist, I think we need to go make one. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and I already had the shell pepper shakers. Okay, so the next item actually came as part of the set of towels that I've already shown you. And like I said, on a couple of them, there was a little bit of discoloration and I disclosed that because I wanted everyone to know about it. This one has a lot of discoloration, but it's pretty cool. So it's again, it's one of the big dish towels, but you can kind of see the discoloration that's near where the folds were. So that is something that maybe OxyClean would be able to get out, but I did not try it because once again, I didn't want to mess with the stitching of the pineapple cooler. So you've got an uh, anthropomorphic uh, pineapple with a very large fan, I guess, uh, with a drink of lemonade and a butterfly and pineapple cooler. So I, I, or I guess she's not drinking lemonade. She's drinking a cooler, wine cooler. I don't know. She's a freaking pineapple. Who knows what she drinks? I hope she's not drinking pineapple juice because that would be disturbing. Um, so anyway, it's a very cool towel. And the, the, the design is actually in, that is in really good condition. So again, the stitching is really tight. It's not loose. It's, you know, it's very nicely done. It's just the towel itself has some stains. So because I'm not sure the stains will come out, it's two bucks. So for the two bucks for the pineapple cooler towel by giving me letter Y, letter Y, pineapple cooler towel, two bucks. All right. This was kind of a solo item that I had. Again, I purchased this a while ago and I had purchased this as part of a larger set that was um, Hazel Atlas Platinite Apples. They were, sh they were the same yellow. They were, the, they were yellow apples. They had the same um, exact same Platinite color, but this was the one, it was actually, it was part of the set, but it wasn't the apple. So I have the apples, I'm making those available. Um, I'm selling those individually. Those are on my Etsy store. And so I just had this like oddball one that I didn't really know what to do with. And I kept looking for something to like make it another set or at least find one more so I could have a, you know, a pair uh, so that it made it a little bit more desirable to list it online. I never found one. So you know what? That's what the bargain bin is for. It's an item that I it just, it's not worth selling on its own, you know, on Etsy with all the fees and photography and all that stuff, but it's an absolutely perfect condition. It's the yellow platinite. Uh, it is not marked, but again, it did come with the same yellow platinite for the Hazel Atlas apple. So I do believe it is Hazel Atlas, but it's only two bucks and you can have the platinite ball for two bucks by giving me letter T. T is for turtle for the platinite bowl. All right. The next one is a little dish that I picked up that has a... Um, I'm not, I don't think this is necessarily particularly old simply by the name of the company that's um, posted on the back. It's called Hughes and Brews. Now it is made in Thailand. So it's, you know, probably maybe at least five years old, but it's another cat piece. So it could be a butter, butter, um, butter pat. Now the, the, um, the, um, Trusty's bargain bin does not always match the theme of the evening, but I'm like, oh, that could be a butter pat. It could be just a little ring dish. There's a little bit of sticker residue on there from the price tag that I need to get off. I apologize for that. Uh, and the same thing on the back. Um, the It had a UPC label that was falling off. So when I, I had somebody had taken it off to look at the label uh, and I did the same thing. So I just took the whole thing off. I just need to kind of clean it, but you can still see it said hues and brews and made in Thailand. It's just a cute little cat dish in absolutely perfect condition. No chips, no cracks. It's two bucks and you can have it by giving me letter H. Letter H, $2 for the little funky. And that's a pink background. It's not, not really showing super well on the camera. Pink background, black cat, a uh, little square butter pat slash trinket dish. All right. One of the questions that came up on the on my Instagram posts uh, today was if I was going to have any uh, uh, cookbooks. And specifically cookbooks that had a couple of weird, um, very oddly specific recipe requests, including something regarding hot dogs, jello and mash marshmallows, I think. And I really read that about four times to understand if that was one dish. But I responded by saying, yes, I will have a uh, recipe booklet uh, for jello. And so this is a jello branded 
vintage uh, recipe booklet. It has six delicious flavors. And so when it, I think I can't remember if it started with six or if it started with three. I remember that was a trivia question one time is what were the original flavors? So at least when there were six, there was strawberry, lime, cherry, orange, raspberry, and lemon. Uh, the recipes inside, you've got a chicken loaf, which <laughs> that's just disturbing. Um, you want a pint of, pint of warm chicken stock free from fat. Uh, for some vegetable salad, tomato aspic with vegetables, again, yuck. Layered pear and cherry salad. Okay, I'm not sure you want to make any of these jello recipes, but it's got the cool graphics on the front, cool graphics on the back. Inside, there are some colored photographs of some of the dishes, uh, but there's also some um, black and white. So, and actually, most of them are in color, but you've got some more of the, the lady eating her jello. So, Whoever wanted, I can't remember who it was, but somebody wanted a recipe book on Jello. I think you wanted it with KC. So Carrie, Carrie Austin. Um, here you go. It's two bucks, so you can have it in your collection. Two dollar Jello recipe booklet by Give Me Letter Z. Letter Z. Two dollars for the Jello recipe book. I also have another recipe book. This one is from Taylor Wine, and it is Success with Game in Camp or Kitchen. This was equally disturbing uh, because you basically end up seeing recipes of little woodland creatures that you typically think Snow White is going to talk to, and instead you're turning them into pie. Um, but, you know, it's all things to all people. There are some very cool graphics on here. There was a date, and now I can't remember what the date was, 1964. It is copyrighted, 1964. Most of it is just two-color artwork. Um, the brown ink with the green, actually I say most of it, it's like actually all of it. Um, but there's some very cool, uh, illustrations on here. If you get past the fact that you're about to kill everyone that you see. So this is a $2 success with game in camp or kitchen, $2. Oh, it's from Taylor wine, the Taylor wine company of Hammond's port, New York. So what goes good with the game wine? Uh, you can get it for, give me letter B letter B for the game menu recipe, let her be $2 uh, for the little recipe book. All right, I uh, had a, a um, spoon rest earlier in the sale. There's another spoon rest. This is not a marked piece. It has the uh, Asian writing on the back that I don't even know if it's Chinese or Japanese. There's no other indication. So it's a little bit probably more modern if it had a, probably had a label on it. Um, I'm saying it's a spoon rest, but it's really a flat dish. There's no part of it that's recessed. The Where the banner is here at the top, there's a little bit of a lip, but it's not really like, I, I just say it's a spoon rest because that's about the general shape of it. Uh, it could be a really big coaster. You know, you could do it whatever you want. It's a kind of a cool item, but if you know Etsy, it's hard to sell something on Etsy if you don't know exactly what it is and can't really label it with anything. So you've got an odd shaped dish, flat dish, does look cool. I really liked it. Trying to find another home for it by selling it for two bucks, two dollars by giving me a letter F, F, two dollars for the Asian style dish. This uh, I had picked up um, from. Actually, this came from Thrift and Dollar. So if you saw the announcement at the beginning of the show, I am going to be hosting a uh, meetup with Michelle from Comfy Cozy Living, and uh, maybe she'll bring her salt and pepper shaker and her shiv. Um, but we will be doing, and she can wear her apron. Um, we will be doing a shared meetup in the Aurora area. And one of the places we will be going to is Thrift and Dollar. And that's where this came from. So this was one of those items that I don't often buy things specifically for the bar bargain bin, but it was a case where I saw this. I, I'm not, there's not a lot of age to this. I really have no way of, of knowing because it is branded with who manufactures the locket. Let's just destroy French all night long. Locketon. Um, the really expensive personal goods store that I couldn't afford a, a bar of soap to put in this. Um, it's, a, it's a soap dish. And it's a very nice, this is a very nice quality soap dish. It's a very nice, decent, like weight of pottery. It's not marked in any way other than with the brand Locketon, which if you um, buy stuff from there, why are you shopping in my sale? Um, this is just a cool dish and I got it at a cheap enough price that I thought this was kind of a fun addition. That's kind of kitchen, maybe moving bathroom, but I just thought it was a fun addition that I'm selling it for two bucks. 
So two dollars for the Lakatan. Um, I'm just making it up now. Lakatan um, soap dish. Two dollars by giving me L for Lakatan. That was totally uh, that was totally coincidental. Um, so Lakatan L uh, for the soap dish. And I've got one item left. And this is an item where you learn things as you go. This is a case where I had sold something to somebody. They asked me to hold it while they waited to be able to pay me. They ended up waiting a really long time. And in the time it took me to receive their money, I broke it. So it's their fault, not mine. No. <laughs> um, so anyway, it is what it is. I, I, it's broken and I don't like to deal with broken things. But it's a cool piece. And so again, if you're familiar with my channel, if I carry something that has damage, it's because there's something special about it. And this, I think, qualifies. I will just tell you, I paid more than $2 for this. But because of the damage, I don't feel comfortable getting any more. But if you look at this, and I'm trying to hold it in a way that I'm not blocking anything. If you look at this, it is very hard to tell where the damage is. But it's there. And it's right there. It's where you can see there's supposed to be like a little raised part that goes up on the border. That little raised part snapped off. Nothing I can do about it. So it's damaged. It's a it's an alabaster, I think, or onyx uh, plate of the Taj Mahal inlaid with mother of pearl. I will say I sold it for way more than two dollars, and then they didn't pay, and now I'm just going to sell it for two bucks. So I'm hoping. This would look cool in somebody's vignette that you can deal with the fact that it's got that little bit of damage because unless you really notice it, which unfortunately that is a character flaw in myself, I tend to notice the bad as opposed to the good. If you don't really pay attention to it, it's still a great looking piece and you can get it for two bucks, two dollars for giving me letter V. Play the violin because I broke it. V violin for the Taj Mahal alabaster onyx stone uh, plate. And that is it. Um, I thought I had a smaller sale tonight and I still ran because I, I talked too much. Uh, but appreciate everyone sticking around as long as they did. Um, really hope you all enjoyed yourself. We've got the Huckster Helper is getting her final notes together so I can announce all of the winners from the, um, from the uh, bargain bin. I will read all of them aloud so you know for sure whether you, you won. And L'Occitane. So I wasn't that far off, uh, evidently, is the uh, preferred pronunciation. Okay, so really quick rundown of who won what. The game books um, and the, the game book Taylor Wine recipe book went to Jean, Jean Marie. The Hostess Cupcakes went to Nanette Mendoza, Vintage Roots Collection, Karen Dondelinger, Stacy Brinkley, Vintage Funky Junk, Michelle Mermaid Cove, Suzanne McLean, and Lynn Hampton. So congratulations to the eight of you for picking those up. The cat butter plat pat went to uh, Nanette Mendoza. The soap, the Lakatan soap dish went to Michelle at Mermaid Cove. The plat night bowl went to Michelle at, uh, uh, Michelle at Comfy Cozy Living. The alabaster plate went to Karen, at Don Karen Dondelinger because again, I have to ship something that's already broken across the country so I can break it some more. Br the pineapple cooler towel went to Jean Marie and the Jell-O recipe booklet was claimed and will be paid for by Melody Harris, but she will be shipping it to Carrie at, uh, in Austin. And that is very sweet of you, um, Melody. So I love when I see people working together. So congratulations for all the winners for the uh, bargain bin. So again, uh, if you are still with me and you'd missed the very beginning, uh, what's coming up for the rest of this month, I uh, definitely wanna keep in mind Sunday, um, Kelly from Moss Stone Story Vintage, who has been in the chat for at least part of the evening. Uh, she is going to be doing my deep dive on the 9th. That is for on Little Golden Books. A week from today, I will have another live sale. That will not be a themed sale, just be a regular sale. Uh, then I will be doing another uh, uh, live sale in two weeks. That one is the joint, the group sale, the four sellers, one sale. That will include Vintage Vinny, Fat Bird Finds, and in her very first uh, live sale, the Vintage Carriage House will be joining me for my uh, August Four Sellers One Sale um, sale that'll be on the 20th. On the 23rd is my next, my second deep dive. I do two months every other week. Uh, my second deep dive, that will be uh, Rebecca from Kitchy and Bitchy. She'll be doing Swizzle Sticks. 
Then I'll have another themed sale in three weeks. That will be vintage toys and games. And then what I did not include, uh, and then on the 29th is the meetup with Michelle uh, at Comfy Cozy Living. Uh, she and I will be hosting a meetup in the Aurora area, Western suburbs of Chicago for a full day on September 29th. Anyone that, or I'm sorry, August 29th, anyone that can come, you're, you are welcome. There are no invitations. You're not getting any engraved you know, stationery delivered to your home. Uh, if you hear about the sale, you should come to the sale or not the sale, the event, you can come for the day. We'll probably go to about four, maybe even five uh, locations and see how it goes. We'll just have a lot of fun. And then the very last Sunday, uh, there. this is one of those months that there are five Sundays in the month. I will be doing a bonus. Um, I will be doing a bonus deep dive where I will basically be, I will be pre-recording it and I'll be doing it as a premiere of me. I will be doing my own deep dive on some of my own collections. And I'll be doing those anytime there's five Sundays in a month, I'll be doing that on the fifth Sunday. And this one will be on Lillian Porcelain. And so if you've watched any of my, my haul videos and some of uh, what I've talked about before, Lillian is a new obsession of mine and I have collected every back stamp they've ever produced. And I'll be talking about how to age them, how to tell one piece from another. And uh, I'll be doing it as a premiere. So you'll still have the opportunity to ask questions. It just won't be a live uh, video. So anyway, that's all that's happening for the month of August. Watch my Instagram for more of the information. Watch my YouTube. I will have, uh, I've got the first Friday friend mail is going to be coming out tomorrow if I can finish editing it in time. Um, so, you know, just watch my channel. If you've not subscribed, if you've gotten this far and you're not subscribed, I really would appreciate you to subscribe. Uh, but if not, dude, give me a thumbs up, throw a comment into it, share it with your friends, whatever the case. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you've made it this long. I hope you're enjoying your evening. I do appreciate you giving me your time. I do appreciate those of you who purchased from me. And even if you didn't, if you haven't not watched some of my um, posts, you have now been dubbed the Huckster Hecklers. Uh, sometimes I feel I'm the one being heckled, but you know, it's, it's fun. It's all fun and games. I'm glad you were all here and I'm glad you all enjoy yourself. And thank you for putting your trust in trusty huckster. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everybody. Bye-bye.